All right, so we're looking at uh, multiplying complex numbers. I'm going to erase some of this stuff and so we can walk through it. But uh, we're starting off with four point, well, four I times the quantity of three minus five I. And so you're going to distribute the same way you would um, even if I's or imaginary numbers weren't involved. So that first uh, result of the distribution, 4i times 3 would be 12i. And then 4i times negative 5i would be negative 20i squared. So make sure you multiplying and uh, using all of your terms, not some of it. Sometimes people will leave off the i squared and they would just have negative 20i. Just a whole bunch of funky stuff can happen. Just make sure you're including everything and you'll be all right. So that was 4 times the 5, which gave us 20 i times i which gives us i squared now in your final answer you should never have i squared and the reason being is because of this part right here when we're looking at uh the square root well i is going to be square root of negative one we talked about that before but if you were to square that i squared would cancel out the square root which would leave you with just negative one so whenever you have i squared it should reduce down to negative one. So that's why I squared would never be a part of your final answer because you always want to write your most simplest answer possible. And so right here would be the result. We have 12i minus 20 times negative one, which would give us positive 20. And standard form, the real part is written first, imaginary part is written second. So we would write 20 plus 12i. So I know before my math lab held you to writing it in standard form. So if you were to write it 12i plus 20, it should give you a, a uh, not necessarily a warning message, but a hint to say write in standard form. If not, then you're good to go, but it should be holding you to writing in standard form. All right, questions before we go to the next one. All right, we here we have uh, seven minus three i times negative two minus five i. So we have our binomial distribution that we would have to do. In other words, seven times, whoa, we hit the wrong button. There we go. We have seven times negative two, seven times negative five i, negative three i times negative two, negative three i times negative five i. So that result would be here. So it'd be negative 14 minus 35i plus 6i plus 15i squared. Then you combine your like terms. We have negative 35i positive 6i, which will give us negative 29i. And then just like before, it's i squared. times negative one, I mean, I squared turns into negative one. And then we can finish off by combining negative 15 and negative 14, which will give us negative 29 minus negative 29 I. All right, questions on that? All right, next thing, complex conjugate. A plus BI, the co well, the complex conjugate of A plus BI is A minus BI. All you do is you change the sign of the imaginary part. So here are examples of complex conjugates, five plus three i and five minus three i, negative eight minus 11 i, negative eight plus 11 i, 23 i, negative 23 i. 
all of those are complex conjugates of each other. All right. As always, if I scroll up and you're still copying, of course, let me know. I think I only see one person today. All right. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? So here we have, um, this is how we would divide. We have 3i over 4 plus i. All right. So um, in order to divide using our imaginary, you would multiply both top and bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So we have four plus i in the bottom. That means we're going to multiply top and bottom by four minus i. Remember, you have to do top and bottom. If not, you're going to change the value of your expression. So that's what we have down here in red. We have three i over four plus i, and I'm multiplying top and bottom by four minus i. All right, so. I'm sorry, I'm not done copying. Can you go up a little bit? You said scroll up real, real fast, right? No, it's less. All right, so let's do right here. I'm gonna walk through what's in blue under that. So uh, I was gonna erase it, but since it's already there, we'll just leave it. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, so here um, we have our numerator 3i times 4 minus i. Do our distribution. 3i times 4 is 12i. 3i times i is 3i squared. Once again, our i squared goes to negative 1. So that will be 12i plus 3. And so this right here will be our numerator. 3 plus 12i, 4 our denominator, once again, we have our binomial distribution, 4i plus, 4 plus i times 4 minus i, so we do 4 times 4, 4 times negative i, i times 4, i times negative i, and so 16 minus 4i plus 4i minus i squared, Four i's cancel in the middle. i squared goes to negative one. So that gives us 16 minus negative one, which is 16 plus one, and that'll give us 17 as our denominator. And so that'll take us up here. 13 plus 12 i over 17. And I believe, I don't know, I don't know if I mentioned it. It might have been another class. Anyway, so when we have 30 plus 12i over 17, and we have our imaginary and real parts, we are supposed to separate them to write them in standard form. So that'll be 3 over 17 plus 12i over 17. That'll be our final answer. So if you have any questions before we go to the next one. The um the negative i squared. Mm -hmm. How did you um like turn it into like the, the the like the one? Well, i squared is always always going to reduce to negative one. Okay. So that's because i is the square root of negative one. So when you square that, the square and square root cancel and leaves you with just negative one. Okay. Yep. So whenever you see i squared, just know that that reduces down to negative one. Okay. All right. Anybody else before I scroll? Make sure we're good. Pretty good. All right. Okay, good. So next one, um, just the square root of a negative. Whenever you're going to calculate with it, 
Um, before you simplify, calculate, it is the best practice to go ahead and take the I out. In other words, apply the negative, the square root of negative, which is I, and then go about uh, doing your calculations and your simplification. So here we have just a small example of how if you don't uh, recognize that the square root of the negative is I, you could get the wrong answer. So the square root of negative 25 times the square root of negative 4, if you want to multiply that, you can multiply what's under the radical, but negative 25 times negative 4 will give you a positive 100. Square root of 100 is a positive 10, and so that's the incorrect way of doing this. So I'm going to show you two different ways you can do this. Uh, the first one is in green, square root of negative 25, square root of negative 4. If I were to take the i's out first and leave 25 and, 20, and leave 25 and 4 under the radical, and then multiply, I got i times i, which is i squared. Uh, 25 times 4 is 100. And so i squared, like you just mentioned, is negative. And then the square root of 100 is 10. So that's the proper way. So notice you get negative 10 in one, positive 10 in the other, and the positive 10 was the incorrect way because we didn't recognize the relationship of the square root of negative. Now also we recognize the square root of 25 and the square root of 4. They can be reduced to 5 and, four, um, and uh, 2. So if you want to reduce it all the way down, you can do that as well. Square root of negative 25 is 5i. Square root of negative uh, 4 is 2i. 5i times 2i is 10i squared. And then once again, that reduces down to negative 10. So either way, you'll get the negative 10 as your final answer. But in both cases, notice before we did calculation, we recognized that i needs to be pulled out first. I'm sorry, can I ask a question, sir? Yeah, sure. So, so basically, when you're taking a square root and you're and you want it to be a positive, right? And that's where you're getting the i from. Is that what I'm understanding? Well, you're taking the square root of the whenever you have the square root of a negative value. Let's say okay. negative x. That square root of negative has to be represented as i. Okay. And so, um, it's not necessarily about uh, having a positive, but it's just recognizing that the square root of a negative is i. And that if you do calculation before you recognize that, that 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 relationship could be removed, and then you have something like right here, okay. which would never have occurred if you took the eye out first. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it basically you don't want to lose that relationship of the square root of negative one throughout your calculations. Gotcha. So basically, the eye is just ba is, is always solidifying that that it's a negative, and it's just basically allowing us to to handle things that they. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yep. Solidify and making sure that, let's say, if somebody else uh, saw the result, that the only way they got to the result is because you recognized that there was a negative under the radical, you know, and so you don't want to lose that. Okay. Is it Mr. Tucker? Yep. Um. So does that mean like um in this case like where it'll be any number, any imaginary number, like let's say five. I squared that will still be like a um, it'll still come out as a negative in the end. So you said if you have five I squared. Well, um, yeah, when the I squared is that for any number or just yes, yeah. Whenever you have I squared, the result would be a negative. Okay. Yep, that I squared would disappear or reduce down to negative one. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Thank you. All right, so let's look at um, let's look at breaking this down. So don't look at the red yet. So we have in black the square root of negative eighteen minus the square root of negative eight. So we talked about breaking down. Oh, let me erase this stuff so we can walk through it. Come on, there we go. Talked about breaking down numbers that aren't perfect squares before. So we look at the square root of negative 18. We're going to break that up into, let me get my blue back, square root of negative 9 times the square root of 2. You know, negative 9 times 2 is still negative 18, but I can take the square root of negative 9, which is 3i, and we will leave the 2 under the radical. All right. So now, in order for us to be able to combine these two terms, 
overheating the red has to occur. In other words, when I add or subtract my terms, I have to have the same index on my radical. I have to have the same radicand. That's what's under the radical. And if one is imaginary, I, I, whether they either both have to be real or both have to be imaginary in order for me to be able to add them together. So when I look at what's going over here in the red, just giving you just light examples of what I mean. I have five square root of two plus three square root of two. That would just be eight square root of two. Now, if anything's different as far as the index or what's under the radical, I can't add them together. So this next one, five square root of two plus three square root of seven, because I have square root of two here, square root of seven here, I can't add them. Let me put that back. And the next one, I have five square root of two plus three cute root of two, because I have square root here, cute root here, I cannot add them. And then in that last one, five square root of two plus three I square root of two, one is imaginary and one is not, so I can't add them. So just wanna make sure we're clear on what we can add and subtract from each other and what we cannot. If anything is different with the index of the radical, anything is different with the radicand, that's what's under the radical. Or if one is imaginary and one is real, you can't add them together. Everything has to be the same following that initial coefficient. All right. All right, so looking at the square root of negative eight, we can break that up into negative four and two. Negative four times two will still give us negative eight, but I can take the square root of negative four, which is two i, and I will leave the two under the radical. So before we look to simplify this, combine our terms, questions on what we have, and the blue, the green, or what I did over here in the red, just to emphasize what we can or cannot add together. All right, so go ahead and subtract them from each other, three i square root of two minus two i square root of two, and that will be i square root of two. Remember, if you don't see anything in front of the i, they assume you know it's a one there. So two min three minus two is one, so it'll be i square root of two. Or if you want to write the square root of two in front of the i, that's fine. Just make sure you don't make a mistake and extend that radical over the i because it will be marked wrong in my math lab. Next one, I probably should have separated this by the end. I'll deal with that separation later. All right, so here we have negative one plus the square root of negative five squared. So the first thing I did was recognize that we have this square root of a negative. So I went ahead and brought out the i. Remember I said that's what we should do first to go ahead and hold true to the relationship, the initial relationship with the square root of a negative. So we bring the i out. Then whenever you're squaring a uh, quantity, you can't just square, you know, negative one and square i square root of five. That's not how that works. So whenever you're squaring a quantity, this is what occurs. You have negative one plus i square root of five times negative one plus i square root of five. And then you do your binomial distribution.
All right. So after you do the distribution, we have one minus I square root of five minus I square root of five. And then once again, be careful with your multiplication here. I times I is I squared. And then square root of five times square root of five is square root of 25. All right, I like somebody in the chat. Oh no, it's, it's fine, it's fine. It's already going in and out. Um, so then we combine the like terms, negative I square root of five minus I square root of five would be negative two I square root of five. And then here, I squared is negative one. Square root of 25 is five. So that's how we got a minus five in the back. And then combine your like terms of one minus five and that'll be a negative four minus two I square root of five. Questions, any questions? I do have a question. Yep. Is the example before this one, are those two different examples or is it just one? Well, this is one example right here. And then this was the first, the other, yeah, another that example. One. Yep, that's a separate. Now when you say is it, this one is separate from the one we just did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. Okay, okay. So, so now this right here, uh, you had to break them down separately. So you had to do this one and then do this one separately and then bring them together right here. If that's what you're asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you, you kind of had to treat each expression as its own uh, little simplification process. And then, like I said, bring them together down here in this purple. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions before we look at, I think the last one out of this section. Yeah. All right. So let's look at this next one. So we have negative 25 plus the square root of negative 50 over 15. So the first thing we want to do is to simplify the square root of negative 50, which is over here. So we have the square root of negative 50. I will break that up into negative 25 times 2. Negative 25 times 2 is still negative 50. But then when I take the square root of negative 25, that will give me 5i. And I leave the 2 under the radical. So once again, that's what's happening right here. And then I take that and bring it to the problem right here. And now we need to reduce. So we take that 15 into each turn. So it's negative 25 over 15 plus 5 over 15 and reduce by fives, and we have negative five over three plus i square root of two over three. Make sure we are okay. All right. Questions on anything before we go anywhere else?
All right. So, as always, try this stuff out. Um, see if you get stuck on anything. I know I have one or two people that emailed me about uh, setting up uh, office hours with them. So, that option is always available. Um, you're all going to get to a point where we'll have class time to answer questions as well. And, you know, I'll set aside like, you know, like a whole class period, like one or two. I know I'll do one, depending on you guys, you know, how much, how many questions you actually have. If we need a second one, then we'll do that as well. But that'll be on you. You know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, if you have questions, make sure you ask them. So that was uh, the close out of 1.4. 1.5, and we'll do some of 1.5 today. You don't have to do all of it, but uh, at least get it started. Looking at quadratic equations. So your general form of quadratic, of a quadratic equation is a squared, ax squared plus bx plus c uh, equals zero. All right, somebody raise their hand. It's Crummit. Uh, I've been having right. Oh, hello. <laughs> hey. I've been having trouble logging into math labs. Okay. So um, make sure you stay on before we close out and I'll see if there's anything I can do to help. All right, thank you. Yep, not a problem. All right, so one of the main differences he, uh, when it comes to our quadratic equations versus our linear equations, which is what we dealt with up to this point, um, we have our second degree or exponent of two over our variable. Um, that's going to yield two solutions. Um, you know, what we dealt with up to this point was one solution and um, only had our first degree equations. Here we're going to discuss four different methods to solve these quadratic equations. So we look at the zero factor property square root property, completing the square, and your quadratic formula. All right, so looking at the first method, zero factor property. So those two first uh, words are very important in how we're gonna actually solve this. Uh, zero means that first of all, we need to have one side set equal to zero. And then factor means that you're gonna be leaning on your factoring skills in order to be able to solve. So um, if you have any issues with factoring or haven't done factoring in a while, you need to get with me or need to see a video, talking about it, let, make sure you get with me and I can either uh, have a separate discussion with you or send you a video. Depends on what you need, and what you want. Um, but it states that if A times B is equal to zero, then A is equal to zero, B is equal to zero, or both. All right. So if I have this quantity or this equation of X plus five times X plus two equal to zero, that's already in its factored form. We have our linear factors. It's factored out as much as possible. And that's the, the scenario we want to create for ourselves. We're going to have an equation. We're going to factor it down to look like this. Once we've done so, we can set both quantities equal to zero, solve for x, and we'll have our two solutions. So I'll take x plus five, set it equal to zero. Take x plus two equal to zero, subtract five from both sides, I'll get x equal to negative five, subtract two from both sides, get x equal to negative two. And those will be my two solutions.
All right. Can you go up a little bit? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me know when you're ready. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else before we go to the black? All right. So here we have 4x squared minus 2x equal to 0. So your first move is to factor as much as possible. We already have one side set equal to 0, so that's good. To, um, we're good to go on that end. Or, um, go ahead and factor. What we can do is factor out a 2x from each term. That's our GCF, greatest common factor. That will leave 2x minus 1 in the parentheses. Right. Remember the way factoring works. If you're saying that that factor expression um, is correct, then if I were to multiply this back out, that should give me what I originally had. All right. So we factored out 2x. So now I'm going to set 2x equal to 0. So it's 2x minus 1 equal to 0, and then solve. So 2x equal to 0, divide both sides by 2, x is equal to 0. And then for 2x minus 1 equal to 0, add 1 to both sides, divide by 2, x is equal to 1 half. So those would be your two solutions, 0 and a half. Um, Professor, can you do me a favor? Can you just go up to the red stuff? Um, I just want to make sure that I have it. Okay. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, questions for the good next one. All right, so the next one, 2x squared plus 7x equal to 4. So you want to set one side equal to 0. So we'll subtract 4 from both sides. So that'll give us 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 equal to 0 is right here. All right, so we want to factor this trinomial. We have a minus sign in the back. That means both of our signs are supposed to be different. Like I said, if you uh, need those rules to factorization and all the stuff like that, make sure you get with me out, you know, outside of class so I can make sure that you guys are straight. Because this is the only part that they talk about factoring. <clears throat> then they go on to something else. So, um, you know, like I said, make sure you get with me. Um, the first expression in each is going to be a factorization uh, or result of that 2x squared. The second one would be the result of that 4. And so we have 1 times 4 back here. Oh, I chose 1 times 4. I only chose options are 1, 4, and 2, and 2. 
So I chose one and four. 2x times x is what went in front from, from this 2x. Now you can go and check. Now, if you're doing it according to uh, the factor by trial and error, what you would do is check to make sure that this is the correct factorization by doing your binomial distribution. And when you multiply that back out, it will give you, you know, this trinomial. And that's the way you can always check your factorization. You can always multiply it back out to see if you get what you originally had. If not, then you just need, may need to change a few things. But this 2x and this x came from 2x squared. The 1 and the 4 came from 1 times 4 to give me 4. And when you fold them out, it will give me 7x in the middle. <clears throat> Once you factor um, completely, you can set each piece equal to 0 like we did in the last one. 2x minus 1 equal to 0 and x plus 4 equal to 0. And when you solve, you'll get your two solutions. All right, scroll up, everybody good. All right, so next one, and this is a different problem right here. I didn't do any type of dividing, divider. Um, we have x squared minus 3x plus 36 equal to zero. All right. So whenever we have a plus sign back here, that means both of our signs are supposed to be the same. And this one lets us know which one we should use. So both of our signs should be negative. We have x squared here. So this x times x will be a result or the factorization of that x squared. And we need to get 13 in the middle. And so 36, when we look at our factors of 36, what two numbers will multiply to give us 36? We have 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9. And of course, what we should use is the 4 times 9 because they will add together to give us 13 in the middle. So once you do your factorization, set each part equal to 0. x is equal to 4 and x is equal to 9 as solutions. What happens to 13? When you fold this out, the 13 shows back up. Oh. Yeah, if you were to multiply it back out, you'll see that you'll get the 13 in the middle. What you have is negative 4x and negative 9x in the middle. And adding those together will give you a 13x back. So yeah, remember your factorization, always multiply back out to give you what you originally had. All right, I think I got one more factor in. Yeah. So here, 9x squared plus 9x equal to negative 2. So one set one side equal to zero. So what we did here was add, I don't know why I erased all of it, but 
we added two to both sides. So we can set one side equal to zero. Remember, that should be your first goal if it has not occurred. But to set both sides equal to zero. All right. So then uh, we have 9x squared plus 9x plus 2 equal to zero. We need to look at the fact that we have a plus sign back here. That means our signs are going to be the same. And then this tells us what signs are going to be. So that means both of our signs should be positive. Our factors of two, which is one and two. Factors of nine, one times nine and three times three. So those are our choices as far as what we will put in our box or in our parentheses, excuse me. We don't have a choice with the one and two, so we just put in one and two. And we want to get nine in the middle. So I tried three X and three X. So now when you fold this back out, and this is what I mean by uh, what your factorization, how your factorization, factorization should multiply back out to give you what you originally had. If you were to fold this back out, three X times three X is nine X squared. Three X times two is six X. One times three X is three X and then one times two is two. So if you were to add six X and three X in the middle, you get your nine X. So that's how your factorization is supposed to work. If you haven't seen it in a while, you know, once you factor it out, you always want to, if you want to check it, you can always do so by multiplying it back out and it'll give you what you originally had. So three X plus one, three X plus two is equal to zero. Set each part equal to zero, and then solve them individually. Subtracting one, subtracting two, and then dividing by three for each one of them respectively. And those would be your two solutions. All right, questions, any questions? Right, let me see something real quick. I started scurvy property there. Any questions before I move off this page? All right, so let's do this one last thing and then we'll close it out for today. Square root property. The second method in this section it says if you have u squared equal to d, then if you want to solve it, you would take the square root of both sides. When you do so, the result will be plus or minus square root of D. <clears throat> and I'll show you why in a second. All right, so if we have the square root not the square root, if we have x squared equal to 25 and we want to solve, remember we want all of the values that we could plug in for x. That would make that a true statement. So you want to know what um, numbers you can multiply to itself or square that would actually give you 25. And that would, of course, be 5 and negative 5. You know, multiplying 5 times 5 will give you 25. Negative five times negative five would also give you 25. So when I go to solve, if I take the square root of both sides, that will cancel out the square on the left. 
and give me the square root of 25 on the right. But in order to, in order to give an account for the plus and minus uh, five times five, I would just put plus and minus in front of my square root. So whenever you take the square root of both sides, you have to do plus or minus to give an account for both answers. And then when I finish it off, I will have plus or minus five as solutions, which is what we already saw had to be the case. So once again, if you're solving, whenever you take the square root of both sides, plus or minus has to be involved on the side that uh, the cancellation didn't occur. Questions for I scroll up. Not a good. All right. So now looking at nine x squared plus twenty five equal to zero. You notice before when we did the square root property, it was uh oh. Let me do this. Hold up. Okay. When we go back here, is u squared? Then we took the square root of both sides. So whatever it is that has the square, we want to isolate that. So when we look at nine x squared plus twenty five equal to zero, the first thing we want to do is subtract twenty five from both sides. And that'll give us 9x squared equal to negative 25. Still trying to get x squared by itself, so we'll divide both sides by 9. Nines cancel on the left, leave me with negative 25 over 9. So now that I have my x squared by itself, that's what I needed. Take the square root of both sides. Square and square root cancel over here. Then take the square root of negative 25 over 9. Don't forget plus or minus had to happen. And that'll be five out over three. Questions before we look at another one. All right. So this next one, we have x minus two squared equal to six. So the part that's being squared is already isolated, it's already by itself. So we need to get the square off of that quantity in order to be able to move forward. So we'll take the square root of both sides. Square and square root cancels on the left. And the result 
result would be x minus 2 equal to plus or minus square root of 6. So now I need to get x by itself. Add two to both sides. Twos cancel. And we have two plus or minus square root of six as a result. Um, what I was saying over here is that my math lab may not have the plus or minus symbol. So you may have to list out both answers, two plus square root of six, two minus square root of six. If we were doing it by hand, you know, this answer right here would be fine, be fine. But uh, my math lab, I think you have to list out both answers. And of course, square root of six, we couldn't reduce any, but if we could, you would be expected to do so. before we go to the next one. All right, so the next one, we have x plus four squared equal to 81. That's the last one for today. So to solve, you take the square root of both sides. Square and square root cancel. And that'll put us right here, x plus four, plus or minus square root of 81. Square root of 81 is nine. And then from here, we subtract four from both sides because we want to get x by itself. Fourth cancel. And that takes us here to negative four plus or minus nine. So we have to be careful here and make sure that we um, finish off the problem. The last one we had, we had uh, two plus or minus square root of six, and we cannot add or subtract those numbers to or from each other. But when you have four and nine, that's something that you can simplify further and they will expect you to do so. So you would go ahead and uh, simplify negative four plus nine is five, negative four minus nine is negative 13. And so those will be your final answers. All right, questions, questions, questions. All right, so we will pick up here on next class. Look, we'll start with completing the square. Um, finish off 1.5, probably touch on 1.6. Um, I know I have someone that I need to stay back for, but if you have any individual questions, uh, feel free to stay back. Outside of that, I will see you guys on next class and have a great day. Thank you, you too. Thank you, the same. Have a good one, Thank you. Thanks, do the have same. Take care. Great Take care. Yeah. All right. Let me stop recording.